Hi, I'm Chris Delion of Game Keto. I'm a game development trainer, and making your own video games at home is awesome. When I work with clients who've never made a video game before, I always walk them through the same series of steps for the first session or two. It takes about two and a half hours. But during that time, we write their very first game. It's a classic 1970s ball and paddle style game just to familiarize them with programming concepts like collisions, motion, bouncing, artificial intelligence, 2D spatial positioning of graphics. Foundational concepts, no matter what game you ever want to write in the future, are going to be useful to you. And it shows it in an applied context where you learn it by doing it, making a game. And I'm telling you this because I'm offering a video course version of that free to everyone who will join the Game Keto list down below by the end of February 2015. I'm going to cover an HTML5 JavaScript, and the reason for that is because anybody with a web browser and a text editor, both of which you already have, can follow along without having to download or install anything. But at the same time, the focus isn't on learning that programming language. The focus is on learning beginning game programming concepts that you can then go on and build upon, no matter whether you want to move on to ActionScript 3, C++, Java, Processing, Python, any number of other programming languages out there, you're going to have a foundation of concepts of how games get made what they look like, how they function. I'm going to show you each and every line on my screen with the type. I'm going to explain it to you, show you what can go wrong with it. I'm also then going to show you on my screen what you should be seeing on yours. And you can have finished in the first weekend, possibly even the first night when you get this email, having made your first game and got some momentum to have crossed that gap from being someone who's never made a game before to someone who now is making games and is just working on getting better and better at it. And what we're going to begin seeing is something closer and closer to approximating smooth motion. And again, what you're seeing over here is every 50 milliseconds, it's printing out the new value for where the ball is. And how, you know, how can we mentally test this? How can we check with ourselves that it's doing what we really think it is? Okay, remember, we set up our canvas, right, here in the code to be 800 pixels wide. That means that right when the ball is approaching the right side, we should expect to see that ball X, as printed out to the console, is around or reaching the number 800. Let's see if that's true. Okay, we've got a full screen view here. Refresh, now watch the number over here. As the ball approaches the right side, we should see this getting nearer and nearer to 800, 600, 700, and 800 right there, right as across the right side. So if the ball's horizontal position, ball X, exceeds that width, then let's have it flip directions. All right, let's, inside, let's go inside and move everything. Let's add that logic. So if ball x is greater than, we know that the number is 800, we'll show in a second, we don't have to hard code it. Uh, then, and that's how this works, is an if statement, does a comparison. If ball x is greater than 800, so on this update cycle, the ball has now moved past the right side of the screen, let's tell the ball speed to go backwards. Now there's a few different ways we can do this, right? We could say equals negative five. That will tell it that when it touches the right, change the value, saved into this label. So the next time, 30 times a second, it gets to this part of the code, it'll add negative five instead of positive five, and it will work its way left. And let's just show that that works. I'm gonna zoom back out, refresh. There goes the red ball, that way. When it hits that wall, it returns it. Now a problem with this is that when I hard code this number in here like that, what if I increase the ball's speed? Let's say we have something in our game code, as we might later, that the game speeds up as we play it. So just to experiment, what if the ball is going 15 pixels per update to the right, and it touches that other wall, it would be quicker to test at least, goes over there real fast, and then it goes back slowly. Because of course, by setting this number to negative five, it's forgetting the speed it was going. What if instead, we set it to negative itself. So if it was going 15, it'll reverse at 15. If it was going five, it'll reverse at five. You'll see that all I did here is instead of setting this to a hard-coded number, meaning a number that is typed directly into code, I can now have it maintain its speed, no matter how fast it was or wasn't going. If I make this 10 as the ball's initial speed, zoom back out, refresh, it'll go over there at one speed, bop off the wall, come back at the exact same speed, which is closer to probably what we want. So if you've been thinking about video game development, but weren't really sure how to wade into it, there's nothing to lose. Like I say, free to everybody. Just join the Game Keto list down below. I'll send you an email at the end of February. 
If you got any questions about the course, feel free to email me at chris at gamkedo.com, G-A-M-K-E-D-O. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Hope to see you then. Hopefully it'll be the start of a longer journey for you developing games. I look forward to playing the games in the future that you develop.